Um, let us go on into the word of God. Notice, please, a passage that is so familiar that we might be tempted to kind of take it for granted. But we will, I am led for us to go to it again today to see what it may say and what it is saying to the saints of the Most High God. Let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 10 and 11. John chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. And we're going to consult two, as far as I know right now, that's the Lord say something else, two other passages in the course of this message. Um, but uh, this is the, the pivotal passage. This is the passage on which the message pivots today. Amen. John chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. And uh, we will, I hope you have it at home or wherever you are, that we may read together. And uh, together, those verses read, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Well, thank y'all for those who did read, but we're going to read it again so all of us can read. And I ain't going to stop at verse 10 this time. We're going to read verse 11 too. Amen. We ain't reading for y'all. We ain't reading with y'all. Amen. Amen. And the word of God reads, The thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. 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 We are by the power and aid and direction of the Holy Ghost will share on this subject today. Living the abundant life. Living the abundant life. Um, uh, It's, it's a reality and has been for centuries since the church began that uh, the same way some of the church runs to embrace truth, uh, there are others who will try to create a new truth. They'll try to improve on what the Lord has said or give it a twist uh, that was never intended. Amen? And a simple, for those who, uh, whether you preachers, deacons, lay persons or whatever, those who are involved in biblical interpretation, one simple, very simple, critical rule of biblical interpretation is the Bible can never mean what the Bible never meant. <laughs> In other words, the, the work of interpretation is to find out what, it, what God meant when he said it. And if that's what he meant when he said it, that's what he means right now. Yeah. 
But people get fanciful and we will get a shade of difference and start a new movement on it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we see the truth of God continually. What does being blessed look like? What does, I'm repeating that, being blessed look like? What does abundant or more abundant life look like? Now, most... Uh, Scholars will say that the more was really an insert in the English text. In the uh, Greek text, it was just abundant life. But whether you say abundant or more abundant, I ain't, that ain't enough to uh, split over. <laughs> which, which, which is the never one you say? What does that look like? Amen. There is, I believe, an intentional, calculated move of the enemy To promote a distorted, cheapening gospel. Amen. This is a gospel that erroneously teaches to be blessed means I must necessarily have more. It means if I'm a child of God, if I'm a saved person, I am due to have more things than others. If that distorted cheapening of the gospel were accurate, then the heads of the mafia must be some of the most sanctified people on earth. People who embezzle and people who are born all those names from the Gilded Age. Amen. 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 People who, who they, they're three, four, five generations down the line and they're living off the wealth that people made in the mid and late 1800s. They must be the sanctified people. If we equate being blessed, being blessed and having abundant life, with an excess of things. Now, before you turn me off, I am not saying that Christians shouldn't have things. As a matter of fact, the Lord wants rich people saved. So that their resources may be used for the furtherance of the kingdom. He wants people with means in his kingdom. But having people with means in the kingdom and having to have means to be in the kingdom are two different things. 
Are we communicating? And so the world has jumped on to it. And have you noticed? Well, let me ask you this. Those of you who may be 45, 50 and above. You remember when you could easily tell a cheap car? Well, a, a, a less expensive car. Well, the car makers got smart. And they realized some of us will never have the real thing. But they make a cheap version. And the emblem looks a lot like the emblem for... Because there's something about looking like you have that attracts the mind of people, the minds of people. But... I remember the wisdom of our elders who had a verse they would use in some songs that went like this. If religion was a thing that money could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. With me and most of us would be Absent this morning. <laughs> but thanks be unto God that living the abundant life, while it involves our means, it does involve our means. But we don't have to have a certain level of means. To be a saved person. And once you get saved, we can't make it our goal in life. Such that we ignore all the other works of God. We just want money and things. Because somehow we attach our worth. To things. Everybody should want to do better. Everybody should want to see their children do better. Amen. But when you get obsessed with these things, we, 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 we lose sight of God giving them to us. And we start looking for ways to get things. Whatever God has for you or me, he knows how to get it to you or me. Are we communicating? Living the abundant life. So, Jesus begins by saying the thief the thief now lots of different names we got for him but the thief <clears throat> in my poor way of thinking the thief is the one who causes spiritual amber alerts Thief on 21. Just stole from a saint on Seaside Road. Be on the lookout for that thief. The thief to me causes spiritual folk to receive an alarm. There's a joker out here. And his sole aim is to mess your life up. 
He's a thief. He snatches. Amen. He doesn't just steal from the sheep. He steals the sheep. Oh, man. I want to get ahead of myself, but remember that. The thief steals the sheep. Got a prepositional phrase to add. For his own good. So the, the, the devil may give you a proposition. Amen. And he may make it seem like you're going to really benefit from it. But baby, if you benefit in some, he's benefiting more. He never gives you something with no strings attached. And the strings mean it's more coming to him, not to you. Or me. That's the thief. He's a stealer. He's an embezzler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a pilferer. Ah, uh, Lord. Amen. He's among, the, among him are the false teachers. The thief is after personal gain. And sometimes he'll try to mesmerize you and make you think I'm doing all of this for you. Can't you see? I'm doing this for you. Can't you see? I really care about you. But when you bite it, he doesn't tell you about the hook in it. thief comes but for to steal to commit theft to take away by theft now I'm telling you something one of the worst feelings in the world is to just have something stolen from you amen or robbed be to be robbed amen amen the, 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 the thief Steals by stealth. He's such a smooth operator. Do you won't even notice him around sometime. He can make himself appear invisible. And he uses stealth. Calmly get you in a vulnerable place so that he can steal you. Now he might leave you, he might leave your body, saints, but he'll steal you. It might look like you still there. What's happened is he has stolen you. You might have the same voice you had all along. But upon closer inspection, he has stolen you. Are we communicating up in here? Help us, Lord. He's a smooth operator. Amen. I promise you the world. What he doesn't tell you is I'm going to steal your world and give you some of that back. That's the thief. He comes to steal and to kill. Amen. Amen. The stealth 
of the thief tells us that he kills us by rushing us. He kills us by blindsiding us. Let me ask one question and we make sense of it. How many folk are here other than me? You can raise your hand home too. I'm looking right at you. How many of us ever got done by people we didn't, didn't expect would do us in? People close to us. They can blindside you because you put your guard down. You know if harm comes, it ain't coming from them. Newsflash. He comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Destroy them means to cause to perish. Amen. Destroy them means to abolish. Amen. It's happening with our land. You ride around now and you say, you, you know what used to be there? Somebody had a thriving store right there. But somebody came in and with stealth. Acted like they were your friend. And before you knew it, they had that property with a fence up. Okay. I the thief causes us to lose. Or he causes us to be rendered dysfunctional. Amen. Now let me get a talk to home. What do you think is behind the traumatic, dramatic destruction of family? In your neighborhood and mine. We got all kind of creations now. We call in family. The thief. Came in by stealth. People used to tough it out. But the thief said. You ain't got to take that. I ain't telling you married folk never messed up. But when they messed up, they used to try to straighten it up. But the thief said, no, you ain't got to straighten up. You, you, you tell them you need to be happy. This ain't got nothing to do with being right. Just be. Now funerals look like jigsaw puzzles. With strangers walking in and sitting in the family seat together. Who know nothing of the real strength, historical strength of that family. Dysfunctional. Can't sit together. Can't eat together. Can't talk together. Can't plan together. Dysfunctional. The thief. Whether it's called. Systematic poverty. Systemic poverty or whatever is a thief. I, I, I believe the thief knows. I ain't going to get on that soapbox this morning. But I believe the thief knows. If we ever sat down and researched 
who we really are. The thief knows if them jokers ever start putting their story back together, we're going to see the rise of a kingdom that threatens this thief that has robbed us for centuries. The thief knows that. Now y'all can put that in any context you want to. I'll say more about that another time. But he causes us to be dysfunctional. So that what? When we need advice, we'll go sit down in front of somebody who doesn't look like us, doesn't live near us, doesn't care about us, and we'll take their advice. And somebody right next to us who really can give us some advice, we won't ask them because we, quote, don't want them in our business. Well, what kind of ignorance is that? When everything falls apart and you all come to your house, that person to whom you went for advice ain't going to see that. We're going to see it. The thief knows if I can breed distrust, if I can breed division, if I can cause them to emphasize what they dislike, about one another. I can, st they'll still be there. They'll look the same, they'll talk the same, but I'll steal them. And I'll house them in projects and prisons. That's an ugliness, y'all, but we got to see that ugliness so we can rise above it by the power of the one who created us from the dust of the earth. I ain't against nobody else. I'm saved. I love everybody. I'm just for me. And mine. I ain't against nobody. Oh, boy. He comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, here's the, uh, here's the, the flip side. Jesus says, I am come. I am come. If you notice the tense of the verb, Jesus saying, I'm continually coming. I'm, I, I don't come just on Sunday morning. I'll be here Tuesday evening when stuff comes. I'm going to be right there. And Wednesday full day, I'm going to be right there. I, I am continually coming, and I'm coming on a mission. Glory to God. We're talking about living an abundant life, y'all. I am come that they might have Zoe. Amen. I'm, I'm coming that they might have vitality. I'm coming so they can stop looking at themselves as the worst of the worst. I'm coming so they can stop looking at themselves as losers. I'm coming as they can stop look, so they can stop looking at themselves as rejects. I am Zoe. I give them life. I give them vitality. I give them the ability to make things. I give them the ability to, 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 to make businesses. I give them the ability. They got wonderful minds. They can make all kinds of designs. That come from no place else but me I give them vitality I cause them to be lively but the holding pins to which many people of promise are now restricted, are dreary, depressing, places of disillusionment and dysfunction. Amen. I 
mean, I'm going to say projects, but I ain't, I'm just talking about, about communities of houses, of housing where folk just don't look for nothing to get no better. They ain't trying to keep it up. They ain't trying to have no pride in their community. They ain't trying. Amen. Amen. When we were growing up, everybody didn't want to plant flowers, but some of the people planted flowers because mama planted them. Amen. And they didn't want their yard to look all jacked up. Amen. So they put some out there blooming. Amen. <laughs> you hold yourself up because you're part of a larger community. In prisons. 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 I don't care whether they're state or whether they're federal or whether it's the county jail. They are lining the private, the pockets of private people who run different businesses in the prisons. So they need your child. They need your son. They need your daughter. He said, I've come. I ain't going to keep you from making no mistakes. You're going to make some mistakes. But if you really ever get locked into me, then you'll know that I, I breathed into you Zoe life. I breathed into you resilience. I breathed in you, into you the capacity to get knocked down and get yourself back up. Not just get yourself back up, but to be better when you get back up than you were before you got up. Woo! I come to give you a full and a vigorous life. I come to give you a life devoted to God. We got to get back to God. Our families got to get back to God. We got to stop creating these pluralistic hell holes where we take everybody's belief system. Amen. And no, 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 no. You meet no grandmama approach, then you do it like grandmama does it. Amen. Grandma called on the name of Jesus. So you get your butt up here and then you don't stand out the circle till after the prayer. You bring your tail right on back up here and you pray in the name that brought your butt to where you are right now. No, you, if you gonna excuse yourself for the prayer, you excuse yourself for the fun, you excuse yourself for the food, get on up out of here. Cause you ain't behaving like one of us. the abundant life Lord have mercy devoted to God God in this world and looking forward to God in the world to come and he says I, I, I come that you might have that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly or more abundantly amen abundant life saints is not primarily about things. You know you can live the American dream and, and be living a nightmare at the same time. You can have every trapping that our society calls an indication of success and be one of the most miserable people in the world. And then you pass them folk on the folk on the on the on the street who's sitting down just you know with a cup or something like that, amen. And we said, Lord have mercy, ain't, ain't that a shame? And they're looking at you like, Lord have mercy, ain't that a shame? They live in that nice house and they ain't got no joy, they ain't got no peace. They got them nice clothes on and they don't speak to one another. The children don't like the parents. The parents don't like the children. The parents don't like one another. But now, to use a colloquial term, who the poor creature? <laughs> who is the poor creature? It's not necessarily about things. Things have their place. I'm glad. I ain't got to tow water no more. I'm glad. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel a tongue coming. 
Amen. I thank God I ain't got to take the bath in the number three tub on the back porch no more. I thank, ooh, thank you. I thank God for that thing called air conditioning. Ooh, Jesus, I thank God. When the storm come, we, we, we have more drips than we got pots. I thank God. So I ain't mad now. As long as we possess the things and the things don't possess us. Amen. Abundant life. The ungodly enjoy the same things. So what do you say? When, 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 when you get a, a home and Move into this nice neighborhood. Thank you, Jesus. And you say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Well, that person next to you, who is a major crook, got the same house or a bigger one. Is that their testimony too? I'm blessed and highly favored. So it can't be the house. It's it ain't that house. It's this house. He ain't trying to build a thing for me to take my body in as much as he's concerned about building himself up in my house. Whew. Sometimes they enjoy better things. Abundant life is about being kept, y'all. Abundant life is about being kept. 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 Abundant life is about the assurance that whatever situation comes my way, the Holy Ghost is going to be right there to assist me, to aid me. Let's look at Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, really quickly. Lamentations, amen, chapter 3, verse 22, amen, amen. Now, the thief comes to, to steal the sheep for his own good, right? Jesus says, I'm come that they might have life. I ain't come to take from them. I come to give something. To. Watch, watch your life. Let me watch my life. When I see things, the thief pulling things, pulling things, pulling things. That's the work of the enemy. Jesus, I came to give you something. Lamentations 3 and 22. Somebody got it? Amen. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Are we communicating? It's about being kept. Amen. Because his compassions fail not. Glory to God. I should have been knocked down for the count. Amen. But I was kept. I should have walked out of town with my head hung down. But I was kept. I should have lost my mind and tried to hurt myself or somebody else. But I was kept. I should have lost all focus and just gone crazy and been in a loony bin somewhere. But I was kept. Glory to God. I'm living the abundant life because I am kept. It doesn't matter what situation I face. It doesn't matter what comes upon me. It doesn't matter how the devil attacks me. I am being kept. Consequently, I am living the abundant life. Every morning. Every morning. He suit me up for that day. Because he know what the devil going to try to do. Abundant life is about being kept. So the things, that, hallelujah, the thief used, used, 
and the things he uses to take us out get interrupted. I need somebody to testify with me. Has the Holy Ghost gotten you so sensitized that you can see the devil when he coming? Has the, has the Holy Ghost built you up to the point where you can tell that joker before he gets on your turf? Not this time, devil. No, 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 no. I fell for that sucker bait. I fell and I fell hard, but not this time. I need to tell you, devil, not this time. Glory to God. I'm crying tears of joy. I ain't crying no tears of remorse. I ain't crying no tears of shame. I'm crying tears of joy because I got the victory. Amen. The Holy Ghost gives me the overcoming that I need. He keeps me through the abundance of grace. We experience upholdings. The enemy will hold us up. He'll hold up your blessing. You ain't the first one to read Daniel. The angel said, 21 days I was on. The, I got detained 21 days by a messenger of Satan. I had, I see now, I had your blessing. I, I possessed your blessing. I was on the way with your blessing. But in the heavenlies, I got detained by a messenger of the enemy for 21 days. But I'm here now. Glory to God. I know you've been waiting on it, but I'm here now. I know it's been hard, but I'm here now. I know you wanted it for whatever break, but I'm here now. Who am I preaching to? Whose life am I speaking into? Whose spirit am I speaking into? You need to start confessing it. Devil, you held it up, but it's on the way. And it's just a matter of time. Before I hear the angel of the most high God say, I'm here now. And I got your stuff with me. He'll uphold you when the devil comes against you. He'll strengthen you. When you think you ain't, I see now, you think you ain't got no more strength? You, feel, you lay down and say, Lord, this must be it. I can't even lift my hand no more. That's what that, you know what that means? It ain't lifting hand time right now. It means you still got a mouth. Just start saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you can't see out your eyes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you see hell to the left, to the right, and front, and the back, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If some of the folk who were with you are now against you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't try to understand the devil. He the devil. You just use what you got. Jesus. He'll strengthen you. He'll quicken you. And he'll comfort you. I come to give you life that is beyond and every saved person every person who is seeking to please God in our lives and it is, is in relationship with God through Jesus Christ all of us are evidence that we are living the abundant life if that thing you waiting for is detained a while longer. Don't you dare insult God by saying how you gonna praise him when you get that thing. What you saying is all the other things you got ain't worthy of his praise. My suggestion is <laughs> start praising him for what you got already. Start praising him for where you are already. Start praising him for how he brought you through last year. Start praising him for how he made you to succeed in the face of defeat. You'll start praising him now. The future will take care of the future. He blesses us beyond in quality 
and beyond in quantity. To be blessed abundantly is to be blessed in excess. I got, a, I got more than enough peace. I have access to more than enough joy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It ain't about money now. But I got what he needs me to have. I am living the abundant life. Amen. I'm blessed because I have abundant life. And because I have abundant life, I was not consumed. Because I have abundant life, I got back up. My testimony ain't that I wasn't knocked down. My testimony is I got back up one more time than I was knocked down. I have abundant life because I know Jesus is my savior. I have abundant life because I have Jesus as my soon coming king. I have abundant life because I have the power of the Holy Ghost comforting and guiding and teaching me as I tra traverse this terrestrial terrain. I have the power of the Holy Ghost and I'm headed to my heavenly home. I have abundant life because he manages my stresses. Hallelujah. Now I know, I know it's a nice little neat saying. I, people got it on t-shirts and everywhere that says I'm too blessed to be stressed. Yeah, I, that, that ain't my testimony. I'm, I, I ain't there yet. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. I'm happy. I'm, I really am. I'm happy for you. But I do get stressed. I, 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 but I thank God that he delivers me when the stresses get to be too much. Y'all, that, that, that's my testimony. Yeah, when he sees that them stresses got my knees buckling, amen, he'll come and deliver me. Glory to God. He delivers me from stresses and he keeps me under distress. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Old folks say, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I know exactly what they meant. Amen. Sometimes I don't know whether I'm coming or going, but I know I'm kept. He takes me through distresses. Then finally, 1 Timothy 6 and 6, and we're out. 1 Timothy 6 and 6. Living the abundant life. First Timothy 6 and 6 says, but godliness. Got that now? Don't talk, don't talk about the contentment. You got to have godliness first. With contentment. That doesn't mean I'm satisfied with every situation in my life. But it means I'm content that God has oversight of everything going on with me. So I'm content. He got me. Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Living the abundant life. The enemy has us confused enough. We need to stop confusing ourselves further. Now, there's a time and a place to talk about the blessings of God, and the overflow of God. Amen. But let me tell you something. Most of the people who got you, got people totally sold on the theology of um, stupendous riches equaling godliness, they're about the only ones who got the stupendous riches. Amen. It's like 
a Christian lottery. Everybody else buying a scratch off so they can get like they scratch off when they give the light bill money. Scratch off when they give the rent. If you do it right, you give God what's right. He'll take care of the light bill and the rent. We bind them scratch off so we can be like. Now, any hate mail that somebody might want to send, let me give you the address. P.O. Box 123. Heaven. And I'm sure the Lord will read it. Ain't no sense sending it to me. Because I ain't going to read it. Amen. I'm going to stay focused on purpose and God. Now, I pray that nobody will take one sentence of what I've said and twist it to say something else because I've not spoken against riches. I, I wouldn't mind being rich before I die. Whatever rich is, rich used to be a hundred air. Then it became a thousand air. Then it became a millionaire. Now it's a billionaire. I know. We'll come after a billion trillion. <laughs> but uh, it I thank God for the excess I enjoy. And I work really hard for everything beyond what I need to take care of my family to be a blessing to the people of God. I ain't trying to hold on to nothing. I ain't being wasteful. But I think God wants people who have to bless people. And I'm telling you, the more you give, it's the truth. The more you give, the more he'll give to you. God got all kind of creative ways to get blessings to you. He blesses me sometimes. The Lord sends people to bless me. I'll be saying, Lord, oh, Lord, I wasn't looking for it. I don't even know how to receive it. I just said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Living the abundant life. And I pray. I pray that be a reality for all the people of God. What does being blessed look like? What does it look like? Is it a gold ring on every finger? Gold all around my mouth? Is it gold around my neck? Is it pulling my $100,000 car up in front of my $75,000 trailer? What? We got to stop being suckers for them people who using the money of the people of God. I ain't knocking nobody trailer. But I'm saying, before you get the $100,000 car, you build you a three-room stick house next to that trailer. And add on as the Lord bless you. I'm going on now, but you, you know you know that they don't count. Mobile homes is real. Because they're mobile. Which means they can be moved. I stop with that. Not unless you make them stationary. Undergird them and take the wheels off. It ain't mobile no more. It twirls them and it got you, but it ain't no more. That's what I'm talking about.
much more than Pastor Doe desiring it. The Lord wants us to live in this abundance. He really does. And he wants us, more importantly, to realize that we're already in it. If it hadn't been for the mercies of the Lord, where would you and I be right now? He's already abundantly blessed us. He made us to bounce back time after time. After, that's abundant life. Things never, we weren't supposed to be successful. He made us to be successful. That's abundant life. Other people who were out there doing the same things we were doing are dead and gone. We still here. That's abundant life. Oh, man. Well, it all begins with relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's the beginning of abundant life. That's the beginning. So I beg, I implore, I challenge you, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, if you've not been converted, that you become today, you can become right now. I, I, I offer Jesus Christ to you. You can live the abundant life. You can have. I'm telling you. And if you're unsaved and you say, well, you know, I got everything y'all saved. People got what I'm saying. Well, you're missing the most important thing. We got security. And you will, you, you, can, you can count up all them things you got. And you ain't got no security. One fire can take out everything you got. But we got security. If I get home and there ain't nothing but a spot, a, 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 a heap of um, a smoldering embers there, I have not lost everything. Because I know the provider. So I encourage you today, be saved. Backsliders, some of you have have slipped away from the Lord seeking things so there is no holy day in your life there's no holy day in the lives of some church people now you follow some of them around on Sunday our holy day I'll tell you now if you orthodox then whatever day is your holy day nothing prostitutes that day Nothing. You don't tag on your likes for that day. I know what the world does. The world puts everything on these days. Yep. Mm -hmm. They can put it on, but they ain't got to get me. That's why you can record. I'm telling you. Come on back to the Lord today. Maybe, he, maybe the devil deluded you, made you think that you had to um, do so-and-so to get out, you know, to make it out. Uh, man, come on, do this, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. The Lord can forgive you today, and he can restore you today, and he wants to. Will you please come if you need to be saved, if you need to be restored, if you need a church home, uh, come on. The number has been given that you can call. Um, ministers will be available to receive your calls and to minister to you. Um, if you need the gift of the Holy Ghost, now is the time. song says reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by it's just that simple wherever you are come on just one chorus of it reach out reach out and touch the Lord as he 
goes by you will find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry he is passing by this moment your needs God will supply reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by we're going to pray asking saints to pray along and out there and here in your home wherever you are, if any part of this prayer, and we need to pray now. We're praying with people who need prayer now, so y'all prevail long enough. Prevail. You, you, you know, just think that that may be, that could have been your son or daughter that needs that lifeline today. That could be your brother or sister who needs that lifeline today. We got to prevail sometimes. Amen. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. I am the one who needs to be saved. I've heard the gospel. Today I heed the gospel. I have things, but I have no security. I want security for this life and the life to come. That security is available only through Jesus Christ and his finished work at Calvary. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I give myself to you. Whatever you can use me for, my life is yours. Get all the glory, all the glory out of it. Make me a new creature. I've been drawn to you by the Holy Spirit. I also want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the wonderful manifestation of a spiritual tongue. Thank you that because of the blood of Jesus and my confession today, Nothing else. I am saved. I have eternal security. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. That's me. Heavenly Father, I am the one who needs to come back home. I wandered, I've wandered, and I've wandered. I wondered about religions. I've wondered, was Christianity right? I've wondered, what's wrong with other religions? But today I know that your word is true. And the truth is for all people, for all times, in all places. I come back to your truth today. Thank you for not turning me away. I love you with all my heart. Forgive me, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. 
I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted unto you. In Jesus' name, that's me. Heavenly Father, I'm the one who needs a church home. I've been floating too long. I've been unidentified and unidentifiable for too long. I found fault with every church and every pastor for too long. But today, I admit that the faults in me lead me where you want me to go. My commitment to you is that I will make you a good soldier. Thank you for directing me to a church home. In Jesus' name, that's me. Heavenly Father, I'm the one who came to you, received you, believed on Jesus, got born again, then I quit eating. I didn't expect any more. I didn't receive any more. I've not been living up to my spiritual potential because I did not receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want him now to rule my life to lead my life. Fill me with the precious Holy Ghost. Give me a heavenly language. I'll serve you better and I'll hold on until the perfect end. In Jesus' name, that's me. Now, Heavenly Father, I reach out on behalf of all the saints, the young, the old, Lord, the little children, who only have what somebody gives to them. Lord, I especially pray for those children who are nobody's children and everybody's children. I pray for those children whose parents don't want to take responsibility for them. Uh, they're young. They, they, somebody's telling them they still got to go out and have a life. Lord, I pray for them, for those children. I pray for those parents that there be an awakening, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for situations where people are fighting over children in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for those situations where parents have put a price on their children's heads, where they'll relinquish parental rights for money. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, do what brings glory to you. Oh, those precious children, Lord. If those parents don't want them, then cause them to be grown enough to let those children go so that somebody who does want them can care for them. Lord, I pray for the elders. I pray, Lord, for those who've been toiling a long time, for those who don't have a good clue of what's going on in the world. All they know is things have changed a whole lot. Lord, breathe your peace into them that they not be stressed about anything, that they be reminded that they belong to you and their lives are in your hands. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all the rest of your children, for churches that really are bound to preaching the gospel, the truth, the way you gave it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray conviction for those who may be teaching otherwise, that we will do it right or leave it alone. Oh God, I pray your power upon your people that we may realize that we are already living the abundant life. Thank you now for hearing and answering this prayer. Thank you for the souls saved today, for the backsiders reclaimed today, for the saints who, for those who are coming because they need a church home. And thank you God for those who are receiving the power of the Holy Ghost, the indwelling, the filling of the Holy Ghost today. For those who just feel renewed and refreshed, in Jesus' name, amen.